You will need some help from family or friends after surgery, so now is the time to make those arrangements. You'll need a coach. This is someone who can help guide and encourage you throughout the process, like a friend or family member. Your coach should help you prepare your home and watch this video with you too. Your coach should plan to be with you the first week after your surgery for your safety as well as to assist you with meal preparation or other activities. They'll also help remind and encourage you to do your rehabilitation therapy exercises if ordered by your surgeon. You'll also want to make sure that someone is available to take you home after you are discharged, as you will not be able to drive yourself home. For planning purposes, make sure to ask your surgeon about the amount of time you will be unable to drive after your procedure. You will need to register for the required preoperative joint replacement education class two to six weeks before your surgery. Call the Joint Replacement Care Coordinator at 847-53-JOINT or visit nm.org forward slash LFH joint class. Before leaving for your surgery, you'll want to get everything prepared for your return. This involves making some slight modifications to your home. But don't worry, we're not talking serious renovations. Most of our suggested modifications are simple and have little expense. You may need to rearrange your furniture. You will need about an extra foot of space around you due to the walker. Put your ottoman or footstool alongside the chair so you don't trip over it. Your coach can place it under your leg after you are seated. Look for other tripping hazards, like loose carpeting or clutter on staircases, and remove them. We also recommend removing all throw rugs, especially any that may be in your bathroom. Check for any electrical cords that may be in pathways. Get them out of your way and tape them down. Put away any furniture that may cause a fall, like rocking chairs, gliders, and coffee tables. You'll want to make sure that you avoid using furniture with casters. The bathroom is the most accident-prone room in your home. You'll want to get some non-slip strips for the bottom of your tub and shower. You may even want to install grab bars near the toilet and in the shower or bathtub. Soap dishes, towel bars, or doorknobs are not acceptable substitutes for grab bars. Your therapist can make recommendations for any other items you might need in the bathroom. In your kitchen, we recommend placing frequently used items in easy to reach places like countertops or tables that are at or just below waist level or at shoulder height. Keep a portable phone in your pocket or on your waistband if your coach needs to leave to run an errand and place night lights in hallways and in bathrooms. You may need help with pet care as well. Arrange for someone to care for your pet during your recovery. If you have a cat, remember the litter box harbors bacteria, so ask someone else to change the litter box for you. You will need to get a front-wheeled rolling walker and cane before your surgery. Your care team can help you choose if any bathroom equipment is needed as well. A bathing sponge with a long handle will help you in the shower. And finally, a sock aid will help get your socks on, and elastic shoelaces will make it easier to get your shoes on and off. They can turn your tie shoes into a slip-on. A good supportive shoe, such as a tie shoe or sturdy loafer, are good choices, as they reduce the risk of tripping or slipping out of the shoe. Once you have confirmed your surgery date, you will schedule a preoperative medical evaluation appointment within 30 days of your surgery. This appointment will occur either at the Lake Forest Hospital preoperative clinic or your primary care physician's office. Your surgeon will give you directions regarding which location to go to for this appointment. This preoperative medical evaluation includes a physical exam as well as lab tests. Some patients may need to see a specialist and may need additional testing such as an EKG or x-rays. This visit will also include a review of medications you need to temporarily stop, such as aspirin or other blood thinning medications. These medications could cause more bleeding during surgery. You may also be asked to stop taking certain vitamins or over-the-counter herbal supplements. Some of these may interact with other medication or anesthesia, or may have blood thinning properties. 
For your safety, please tell your preoperative nurse and physician about any vitamins and supplements you're taking. Before your surgery, you will complete three preoperative skin cleansing showers with HibaCleanse soap at home. This will reduce the chance of infection. Here are the steps. Take one shower on each of the two days before your surgery and take the third shower the morning of your surgery. If you plan to wash your hair, use your regular shampoo. Then rinse your hair and body thoroughly to remove any shampoo residue. Do not use conditioner. Wash your face and genital area using your normal soap or water only. Rinse off completely, making sure you have removed all soap from your body. Turn off the shower briefly or move away from the shower stream. Apply HibaCleanse soap directly on the clean, wet washcloth and wash gently from your neck down to your toes, making sure to wash within your skin folds, but do not scrub. HibaCleanse soap does not lather well. Do not put HibaCleanse soap on your head, face, or genital area. Turn the shower on and rinse off the HibaCleanse soap thoroughly with warm water and keep out of your eyes, ears, and mouth. If HibaCleanse soap comes in contact with these areas, rinse out promptly. Use a freshly laundered clean towel to pat yourself dry. Do not use your regular soap, lotions, powders, creams, or deodorant after your shower unless it's a medication from your doctor. Do not shave below your neck. Dress in freshly laundered clean clothes and underwear after each shower. Put clean linens on the bed the night before surgery. You will also get the instructions on how to complete the skin cleansing during the preoperative total joint replacement education class. Make sure your doctor knows about appointments you have made for any invasive dental work that will happen prior to your operation. Routine cleanings, fillings, root canals, extractions, and implant work are some of the examples of invasive dental work, which can introduce bacteria into the bloodstream. Ask your doctor how long to wait after surgery to schedule dental procedures. After you have your surgery, you may need to take antibiotics before your dental appointments to reduce infection risk. Your dentist or surgeon may prescribe these. Always tell any healthcare provider you come in contact with about your surgical procedure so that they can determine if antibiotics are needed should you need an invasive procedure. Make sure you tell your doctor about any infections you may have had recently, even if they're minor. This includes an open sore, flu or COVID symptoms, a deep cut, infected teeth, or a bladder infection. Your surgery may need to be delayed until you receive appropriate treatment. During your pre-op appointment, your surgical team will discuss with you whether your stay in the hospital will be a same-day surgery or require an overnight stay. If you have a same-day surgery, you will be discharged the afternoon of surgery. If you were staying overnight, you will be discharged the next day after surgery. As you prepare for your short hospital stay, we recommend that you pack as lightly as possible. You'll need to bring a list of your medications. Don't bring any medication with you unless instructed to do so. A list of all your known allergies, medication, food, and environmental, and a description of your allergic reactions to each. If you are staying overnight, you can bring a toothbrush and toothpaste, comb or brush, deodorant, lotion, glasses and eyeglass case, a denture case, and anything else you use regularly. If you use a CPAP mask, please bring your mask, your tubing, and settings. A machine will be available for you. Underwear, socks, loose comfortable pants or shorts, and shoes to wear during therapy. These can be the same clothes you wear to the hospital the day of surgery. Bring your walker with you the morning of surgery. They will be checked for safety and sized to fit you. Do not bring cash or personal items of great value, such as jewelry. Do not wear makeup or contacts the day of your surgery. You will get a call in the afternoon the business day before surgery, or the Friday before if surgery is on a Monday, to tell you what time to arrive at the hospital and what time to stop eating and drinking. We want your experience to be as comfortable and safe as possible, so listen closely as we go over some important information about what will happen during your time with us. Once you've entered the hospital, check in at the registration desk. 
you'll be given directions to the waiting area and pre-operative unit. Your loved ones can remain in the waiting area until you are transferred to your post-operative room. When the procedure is over, your surgeon will speak with your designated contact person. You will be taken to the pre-operative unit where you'll be prepped for surgery and review your list of medications and allergies with your nurse. You'll also meet with your anesthesiologist and will get an IV started. Your surgeon will also see you and mark your surgical site. You may bring one family member to the pre-operative unit with you, but we ask that everyone else remain in the waiting area. Then we'll take you to the operating room to begin your procedure. After your procedure is over, you'll be taken to the recovery room, where you'll stay until your vital signs are stable and you begin to recover from anesthesia. When you're stable, you'll be transferred to your room. You'll have an IV still connected for fluids and antibiotics. You will progress from ice chips to oral fluids to solid foods once you're ready. To prevent pneumonia, we'll teach you to breathe deeply and cough. You'll receive a breathing device called an incentive spirometer. You'll be instructed to do 10 breaths with the incentive spirometer every hour while awake. You may have visitors on the day of your surgery, but it is important to rest and concentrate on your recovery. We recommend you limit the number and length of any visits. We take your privacy seriously. After surgery, your orthopedic care team will communicate directly with you. To protect your privacy, please communicate directly with your loved ones regarding your condition. In the event that you cannot update your family and friends yourself, we ask that you identify one spokesperson to receive your updates. Your spokesperson will use the privacy code provided during registration in order to talk to your nurse and receive updates on your condition. This spokesperson can then provide your updates to your family and friends. Your orthopedic care team will check the color, movement, and sensation in your legs. A nurse will work with other members of your orthopedic care team to create a personalized plan of care to meet your individual needs. A patient care technician will assist you with activities such as moving from your bed to the recliner, turning in bed, getting dressed, and going to the bathroom. You'll participate in physical therapy. This is one of the most important components of recovery. So important, in fact, that we'll have you on your feet the day of surgery. It's important to move as much as possible. We recommend avoiding your bed during waking hours and suggest that you avoid eating meals in bed as well. If you have received a total knee replacement, avoid placing a pillow under the operated knee. Keeping the leg in extension when not exercising is encouraged. After you're discharged, you will continue physical therapy to return to your optimal functioning level. An important complication to be aware of is the formation of blood clots called deep vein thrombosis, or DVT, which can form in your legs due to lack of activity. We want you to get out of bed and walk multiple times a day. We prefer you are only in bed during normal sleeping or napping hours. To reduce the risk of blood clots, your surgeon may order intermittent compression sleeves for you to wear. They are to be worn while in bed and in your chair. Your surgeon will also prescribe a blood thinner. When you are in the hospital, your orthopedic care team will ask you to rate your pain on a scale of 0 to 10, with 0 being no pain and 10 being the worst pain possible. Pain medications will be utilized as necessary to achieve your comfort function goal. We strive to create a post-operative experience that manages your pain and discomfort to allow you to eat, sleep, and participate in physical therapy. Your care team will know about any positions or activities you need to avoid. You will be provided with a cold compression wrap to help with swelling and pain. Always make sure that you place a barrier between the skin and the cold wrap to prevent burns. Infection prevention is another important component for healing and recovery. Your care team will help explain proper wound care to you prior to discharge. Using the stairs, getting in and out of bed, and getting in and out of a car are some of the most common types of movement. Your therapy sessions will help prepare you for a safe discharge. You will learn exercises to help restore your joint motion and strengthen your muscles. While at the hospital, your physical therapist will help you practice. It is recommended that your coach be with you to watch the physical therapy session. 
Here we've outlined some instructions for you so you can practice getting in and out of your cars before surgery. We recommend that you place a plastic trash bag on your car seat for easier scooting and sliding. Don't drive until your surgeon gives you permission. To get in and out of a car, have the driver open the passenger side front door for you and make sure the front seat is as far back as possible. Have the backrest recline to maximize your space. Stand on the same surface as the car. Do not stand on a curb. Back up to the car using your walker until the backs of your knees touch the edge of the car. Place your operated leg out in front of you and keep it straight throughout the transfer. Place one hand on the walker and the other hand on the frame of the vehicle. Slowly lower yourself onto the edge of the seat. Scoot as far back as possible on the seat. Turn towards the dashboard, making sure not to bend your torso or head forward as you bring one leg into the car at a time. Reposition the seat to allow for proper seatbelt function and comfort. Always buckle your seatbelt. Have the driver close the door for you. To get out of the car, simply reverse the steps. Make sure the walker is in front of you before you stand. Getting in and out of bed is simpler. All you have to do is back up to the bed until you feel the back of your knees touching it. Place your operated leg out in front of you. Reach for the bed with one arm and keep the other arm on the walker. Slowly lower yourself onto the bed. Scoot onto the bed as much as possible. Lift one leg at a time onto the bed until both legs are supported. Continue to move your legs to the center of the bed and finally recline back. To get out of bed, just reverse the steps. If your home has stairs, we'll teach you to use those too. To go up the stairs, put your cane in one hand and hold on to the railing with your other hand. Support your weight evenly and lift your non-operated leg onto the step. Bring your operated leg up onto the step and then bring up your cane or crutches. If there's no railing, use crutches in both arms. To go down the stairs, put your crutches or cane in one hand and hold on to the railing with your other hand. Lower your crutch or cane onto the step below. Support your weight evenly and bring down the operated leg. Then lower the non-operated leg. If there's no railing, use crutches in both arms. The exercises in the hip and knee replacement guide are ones you'll be doing with therapy after your surgery. You are encouraged to practice them before surgery on both legs. Don't do any exercise that causes you pain at this point, and follow your surgeon's instructions to avoid any specific exercise. Your coach should plan on being with you to listen to your discharge instructions. Before you leave, we will discuss instructions with you and anyone you wish to have as part of your recovery process. You may have trouble with bowel movements a few days after your procedure, which is why we recommend staying hydrated, eating a high fiber diet after surgery, and frequent movement. Your surgical team will recommend stool softeners as well. You can find specific nutritional recommendations in your hip and knee replacement guide. We'll inform you of weight bearing limits for the operated leg if indicated. We'll also go over prevention of infection and complications, as well as your medications and any additional precautions. You can go back to work and drive once your surgeon says it's okay. Your surgeon will also give you instructions about activity restrictions. Proper wound care is incredibly important in preventing infections and complications. Your orthopedic care team will help explain wound closure, wound care, and dressing management with you. Your rehab provider will help determine the safety tools you'll need. Bathing and showering may also take some extra work. Your therapist will recommend additional equipment if needed, such as a shower chair. Do not have your surgical dressing facing the flow of water. This is to minimize moisture around your dressing. Remember, don't shower until your surgeon says it's okay. We recommend that you always have a family member present for safety. Instructions along with illustrations are available in your hip and knee replacement guide. Managing your pain is an important part of the recovery process. Your surgeon will use multiple strategies to help manage post-operative pain. 
opioid pain medicines may be prescribed. We encourage limiting these, using them only if needed, and only for a short duration following surgery. We want you to be comfortable and to have as easy of a recovery as possible. Therefore, we recommend taking pain medications prescribed by your surgeon as directed. Cold therapy will help with any swelling or tenderness and may reduce pain as well. Your health and safety are our top priorities, but we need your help in ensuring that your recovery is going smoothly. Call 911 right away if you experience chest pain, rapid heart rate, or shortness of breath. Call your orthopedic surgeon if you experience any of the following. Separation of incision line at any point. Increased temperature greater than 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit, or chills increased redness, swelling, or warmth of the skin around the incision, increased pain at the incision site, red streaks on the skin near the incision site, tender bumps or nodules in your armpits or groin, if there is a foul smell from the incision, if you have excessive blood, drainage, or discharge at the incision site, or if you're admitted to the hospital for any reason. Call your orthopedic surgeon if you experience any of the following signs and symptoms of a blood clot in the leg. Pain, swelling in the calf area or behind the knee. Increased pain with walking or standing. New warmth, redness or tenderness. Your health and safety are very important to us. Please contact your surgeon's office if you have any questions.